Welcome to a Legendarium special about May 30th, 1770, the bloody wedding of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. Young Marie Antoinette likely did not know it, but during her childhood, after three centuries of on and off warfare, France and Austria became allies. To cement this reconciliation, King Louis XV of France and Empress Maria Theresa of Austria chose to marry their respective children. By doing so, Maria Theresa chose her young daughter's destiny, and in 1769, young Marie became engaged to the future King Louis XVI. In a curious ritual, after a long carriage ride to the French border, Marie Antoinette greeted some French dignitaries who prepared a house for her. Inside, with help from her ladies-in-waiting, Marie Antoinette removed every stitch of her Austrian clothes and changed into French garb. On May 16, 1770, the young Austrian Archduchess arrived at Versailles. She entered through the palace gates around 10 a.m., and attendants showed her to the Queen's State Apartments. There she readied for the official wedding in the Royal Chapel. At 1 p.m., she entered the king's cabinet. There, Dauphin Louis wore the gold and diamond-covered habit of the Order of the Holy Spirit, and took her hand. The young couple crossed the crowded state apartments, followed by King Louis XV and the Princes of the Blood. Once in the royal chapel, they knelt before the altar, where the Archbishop Duke of Rem took over the ceremony. King Louis XV and the royal family around them, the Dauphin Louis slipped the ring onto his wife's delicate finger, and the new couple signed their wedding registers. In the early afternoon, Marie Antoinette received her wedding gift, a splendid carved cabinet containing an abundance of jewelry. The young couple then attended an ambassador's reception before going to the Hall of Mirrors, specially lit up for the occasion. Because of rain, fireworks had to be cancelled, but the day ended with a feast served in the newly built Royal Opera House. Lastly, the going to bed ceremony saw the newlywed couple led to the nuptial bedchamber. The Archbishop Duke of Rem blessed the bed, and the King gave young Louis his nightshirt, and the Duchess of Chartres gave Marie Antoinette hers. With the entire court watching, the couple lay down to prove that they shared the same bed. Louis XV gave his grandson some advice on how to please a woman before the going-to-bed ceremony. However, he needn't have bothered, for the marriage would not be consummated that night, nor would it be consummated for the rest of the celebrations, which lasted another two weeks. They finally ended on May 30th, 1770, with a grand fireworks display near the Seine River at Place Louis XV. The square and surrounding streets packed with hundreds of thousands of Parisians hoping to get their first glimpse of fireworks. Usually only the aristocrats at Versailles beheld such wonders. Fitting, since Louis XV hoped that the wedding would mark a reconciliation between him and his discontented subjects. The Reggieri brothers, the royal pyrotechnicians of Louis XV, launched the fireworks from a wooden structure in the shape of a temple set up in the square. Since emigrating to France in 1739, they developed different colors, movements, and quick match fuses that lit several fireworks at once, techniques still used to this day. After a promising start, the final rockets set the launch structure itself on fire. At first, the Parisians thought it only part of the show. However, when they finally saw the tower crumbling, the immense crowd panicked and stampeded, pushing towards the narrow Rue Royale. Their nobles in their carriages, along with Louis and Marie Antoinette, also tried to escape. Witnesses told of how people screamed as attendees stamped them to death. Others tumbled into the nearby Seine River and drowned. 
Officially, the death toll of the disaster reached 132, with hundreds more injured. However, one of the attendees, Louis Sebastien Mercier, recalled a different story. He wrote, I know many persons who, 30 months after these frightful scenes, still bore the marks of objects which had been crushed into them. Some lingered on for 10 years and then died. I may say, without exaggeration, that in the general panic and crush, more than 1,200 unfortunate persons lost their lives. One entire family disappeared, and there was scarcely a household which had not to lament the death of a relative or friend. A final death toll is impossible to know because of later deaths by injuries, though the highest estimates climb to 3,000. Louis and Marie Antoinette became genuinely horrified at the tragedy. Indeed, the lavish spending for the wedding angered many who already suffered from high taxes. According to royal historians, the teenaged couple immediately turned over their personal allowances for that month to the lieutenant general of the Paris police, Antoine de Sartine, who then passed out the money to the victims and their families. Survivors laid the many dead to rest in the cemetery of La Ville Levique, a hamlet outside the city, and in a horrific irony, the decapitated bodies of Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI would be dumped there 23 years after their that wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.